Hello there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Why don't you grab a cup of tea and sit down and, and enjoy the program with me, whether you're a regular viewer or if um, you're brand new. I just want you to know you're so welcome. Just come right on in and I think that you will enjoy the program today. We try to deal with anything <clears throat> and everything that affects the home. And as I've said many, many times, that is anything and everything. And of course, the most important thing for anybody's home is to make Jesus Christ the center of it and his will and his way as recorded in the scriptures. I sometimes try to imagine what America would be like if that happened. It would be such a revolutionary change. And personally, I feel that our nation is going down the tubes very, very quickly. It's in a moral free fall. But we are here to change that. And I have a young man with me who could probably give a really good message to the American home because uh, he and his family came here uh, to get away from religious uh, persecution in the country of Romania. His name is Adrian Moldovan. And uh, he wrote this book, Tell Hell, Hell No. And I'm going to let him explain the title. But it is one wonderful book that is so very much needed during this time. We're going to talk about that and also the very interesting background he has because he actually had a grandfather lose his life uh, for the cause of Christ. And, you know, this goes on a whole lot more today than people realize. That there are more people losing their lives today because of their strong belief in Jesus and Christianity than any time in the world in the world history so uh, we need to really understand and appreciate the Christian faith and what it costs to get it to us and I'm going to join Stephanie we're going to make an easy version of chicken and dumplings uh, it's one of those recipes that can serve you well if you plan ahead just a little bit but before I join her we got some more of these in uh, we were out of them these beautiful beautiful pearl cross bracelets called the sideway cross and these are available i'm telling you they look like they're worth so much more than the price we offer them and that is just twenty dollars if you use a credit card or debit card one call 1-800-229-0059 or join uh just write to me you can do that uh homekeepers box 6922 clearwater florida 33758 and we'll get it out to you and this one's a little bit different than yours, yeah. but very same idea. Yes. So, very blingy. Um, yeah, and you've been wanting to give them for gifts. I have. It's wonderful gifts. Yes. Okay. Okay, I can promise everyone they want this recipe. We made it last <laughs> week because we thought we were doing this last week. We had a cancellation. Had a cancellation, so we cooked it up and we put it out there for the crew, mm -hmm. and I didn't even get a bite of it because it was all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and uh, the reports were better than Cracker Barrel. Which blows my mind because uh, I love Cracker Barrel I would chicken agree. and dumpling. I would agree because I love Cracker Barrel, but dumplings are a little heavy. So they this want, is you a want this lighter. recipe. You want a little it, you bit want lighter. it. Okay, so you're spraying. Well, I spray and also oh. put butter in that, right? Yeah, you're going to spray and then you're going to put the so butter in. kind of spray it around the edges. Mm -hmm. And I have two cups of Bisquick and two cups of milk I'm going to... Um, mixed together. Now here's what's great about this recipe. You just layer everything in the pan. You don't mix. So as much as you want to stir and get, get your spoon in there, you don't do it. Okay? Just half a stick of melted butter That's right here. That's half a stick of melted butter. And then you have two chicken breasts there that you're just going to layer on the bottom there. Um, you know, we ought to canonize whoever made Bisquick. Yes. Love, love, love them. And all the, all the interesting recipes, um, now that use a basic cake mix that saves you so much time mm -hmm. and, and you know what's great about this recipe this is one of the ones that we talk about you mm -hmm. know bake a whole bunch of chicken on the weekends mm -hmm. have it ready That'd for the week and then you're one step ahead all you have to do is put all this together mm -hmm. or you could even put this together on the weekend when you you know do some freezer cooking or refrigerator cooking could you freeze this sure um and some people Use a rotisserie chicken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are chicken breasts that uh, we baked. Yeah. Just baked them and shredded them. You can them. put them in your crock pot and mm -hmm. just let them cook all day and then, you know, do extras. 
Okay, so I have two cups of milk and I have two cups of Bisquick, and we're just gonna pour this right over. And don't mix, just pour. Like you said, it's a layered dish. Yes. And then my last step is going to be two cups of chicken broth. You can put that over actually where you oh, are. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. shall I just sprinkle just, it? Yeah. I didn't actually put as much pepper as they called for in the earlier one because it just looked like a lot, but uh -huh. that's just me. I like pepper. Yeah. My grandpa could eat more pepper. Oh, I like it, but I don't like it in abundance. He wouldn't even taste anything. He'd start out with and uh, you want what? That's going to go in here. That's three teaspoons of the chicken granules. These are potent flavor, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, great addition. And okay. we're just going to uh, whisk this together. This is a great weeknight meal. So fast. Oh, and yeah. So if you had a vegetable tasty. or salad, yeah. you're, you're set. Mm hmm. And you didn't get to taste any of it? No, I came down for a bite, and let me tell you, that pan was so empty, I couldn't even get a little bite out of it. And this has been out of the oven for about? Just a couple minutes. 15 minutes or so? So just pour this in. It'll just go where it wants to go. I wonder who thought of all this. Somebody very With the uh, chicken broth and... Look how nicely that comes out. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so you don't stir it. You just bake it for 30 to 40 minutes, 350. 350. Yep. All right, now you get to taste I it. I really shouldn't, but I'm going to because I couldn't wait last week. Oh my. Do you agree? That is crazy. Is that as good How as good that is? Bread? Yes. I think it is. Yes. But I think it's lighter. It's a little That's bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but oh my nice goodness. Food. You want this, I promise. And I think our crew is going to love us again. Yes. So uh, if you want this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. It's called chicken and dumpling casserole. We'll get it out to you. Uh, this would also be a good one to take to your church supper. It's just good. Stay with me. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Home Keepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. All right, I have a new best friend here. His name is Adrian Maldeman. Is, how close did I come? That was perfect. Oh, was it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, there's something interesting about this because it's spelled like the country of Moldova. Yes, ma'am. Basically. And we have a ministry on here regularly uh, where we are ministering to mainly teenagers in uh -huh. Moldova. Praise it's God. right next door to Romania, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. You were born in Romania? Yes. I was born in Romania came here in 1980 and uh, started a whole new life here in America. <laughs> now tell them what pre uh, precipitated that because uh, you were kind of running for your lives, weren't you? Well, um, my great-grandfather was tortured and persecuted for the faith. My grandfather was tortured and martyred for the faith. And in 1980, the communist government stripped uh, our home, uh, stripped us of our Romanian citizenship, our home, everything that we own. And because you were Christian? Us out because we were Christians. Was that when was Ceausescu was there? Yes. His name? Yes, ma'am. Boy, he was. Ruthless. He was Satan. <laughs> he was. Mm -hmm. He was. He did not uh, tolerate any kind of Christian uh, belief, mm -hmm. and uh, communism was what he was pushing and he stood firm on it. <laughs> and so did they just come in and take your belongings? Well, in, in 1980, what ended up happening was, was that my father had picked up the baton after his father had been martyred. And he had started working with different organizations from literally around the world. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they came in in 1980 and uh, in the middle of the night and just ransacked the whole house. Um, Do you remember it? Yes, I remember <laughs> it very vividly. 
Um, I remember them coming in. I remember them tearing up all kind of things, uh, trying the whole, tearing up the whole house, trying to find Bibles and tracks. Um, it was just a huge raid. I remember my mother crying in the kitchen. At that time, they were saying, "Listen, you're never going to see your husband again. Um, we have we have plenty of evidence against him." But what happened was that that since my father was working with all these individuals from around the world. Um, they started sending letters on his behalf and rather than him being in prison for 25 years the Romanian government said listen we better not we better handle this carefully or else we're yes. gonna look bad and so they decided to strip us of everything including our Romanian citizenship and we ended up uh, in Brooklyn New York uh, with a suitcase and maybe $20 bill to our name hardly didn't know any English to start a new life there's one thing I want to touch on um, that scares me because I have great grandchildren, so I have real history in America, and <clears throat> I see us heading the same way. You know what They're is? They're stripping it? God out of the military, mm. out of the schools. Isn't that how it starts? I believe so. I think it's it's incredible. And when you when you look at even what's going on in our judicial system, they're they're mm -hmm. taking the Ten Commandments off of our courthouses. Mm -hmm. Um, there, it's just commonly. We we thought we were getting away from it. Now we're actually seeing it. we're living in a country where <laughs> it's literally going back to the same characteristics of what we came from, mm -hmm. and that's why this book is so important and this message of tell hell no because I mm -hmm. believe we have to stand up oh, and Christians yes. need to raise their voice to say hey we're not going to take it mm -hmm. lying down. Yeah, uh, we're going to put your website up. We'll just leave it up, <clears throat> and uh, people can uh, get the book from that or. Probably it's on Amazon and all these other places. You can purchase the book at tellhellno.org. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And uh, that's uh, there. I want to stick with your childhood just a little bit. Um, it it wasn't easy because you didn't speak the language, <clears throat> and you you go to an English school, and your grades were so poor that was it your father? Your mother said, "Well, at least we know he's not <laughs> cheating." <laughs> I tell you, it was rough. Mm. I, I literally was glad that the persecution had stopped mm. for my family uh -huh. uh, in Romania, but my persecution started when mm. I came to the United States mm -hmm. because um, I did not, I was seven years old. I didn't know the English language. I couldn't grasp the in English language. So I fell back two years in school, which uh, disqualified me for the title of the big dummy. <laughs> yeah, you, my you were bullied education. before it was popular, yes, right? Yes, <coughs> yes, and I had a, a tremendous mm. speech impediment, couldn't pronounce words. And uh, so I had to fight both of these things at the same time. Now, my sisters, they came here, took a test, gained two years. I came here, took a test, lost two years. But it's just amazing. <laughs> I always tell people that God uses the foolish things <laughs> and the weak things, and I'm that person, amen. <laughs> how did they, how did they uh, do so well with English, your well, sisters? Well, they are older than I am, and mm. they had... Of course, women talk. We <laughs> Y'all are anointed to talk, yes, amen. Yeah. I love it. Now, you... Was it in your junior high years that you considered suicide? My sophomore year uh, in, high in, school, school, mm -hmm. in high school, I had uh, gotten to the point where um, I just could never fit in. There was so much rejection that I had to deal with. Uh, rejection from the inside, rejection from the outside. Here my parents were trying to raise us in a new culture. Oh, yeah. And they were raised in a totally mm -hmm. different culture than the culture that we're living in now in America so it was hard for them to grasp and understand mm -hmm. things that I was going through at time but it was just seemed like I was just being rejected everywhere I, I didn't look right I didn't talk right we didn't have materialist we didn't have any we were broke busted and disgusted we mm -hmm. couldn't even pay attention <laughs> we were so broke <laughs> and so it was just you know uh, we we I look at some pictures today I got some pictures of me and some shirts and I them huge butterfly collars I mean you can jump right. off the Empire State <laughs> Building and still land safely. But um, I had a very hard mm. time, and it got to the point where what everybody else was saying to me, that you're a dummy, you're never going to mm. make it, you're stupid, all of these things had gotten to me, and their lies had become my truth. Because after you hear something over and over and over again, then you start thinking maybe what they're saying is true. Maybe I am like they say I am. Yeah, and so you're at the brink of suicide. What changed? What happened? Well, um, I was in the closet, uh, literally, and um, at the point of committing suicide right then, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me in a way that He has never come upon me. A lot of people ask me to explain what I felt, 
And the best way I can explain it is this. For the first time, I understood what the Bible meant when it says, and the peace of God, which Whoa, passeth all understanding. I can't break it down for you. No. I, can't, I can't tell you, uh, explain it to you. But all I know is that the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, came over me. And I told the Lord, I said, God, I've given everybody else a chance. And they have rejected me. I'm going to give you a chance. And if you help me out of this, I'll serve you forever. Well, that, you know, that is, that's just miraculous. Uh, and there, there is no explanation except for God. Nothing but the Lord. Now, we know you, you do not have a Romanian accent today. <laughs> He's lived a lot of places. So you have a combination of Brooklyn and South Carolina. And I have a combination <clears throat> of Brooklyn, Washington, D.C., Fort Worth, Texas, and Columbia, South Carolina, all intermixed. <laughs> well, we understand you very clearly, so that's, that's okay. Amen. That's okay. All right, uh, tell me how you got into the ministry, and then we're going to talk about this book. Amen. So, uh, <laughs> from, from, from that point where you had a real, just couldn't deny encounter with God, how did you end up where you are today? Uh, ministry was something that I ran from as quick, as fast as I could for a long time. Mm -hmm. Because when you looked at the benefit package, especially that comes along with my family, um, mm -hmm. I just wasn't going to sign up for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I decided a long time ago I didn't want to be broke, busted or disgusted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to go into business. That's where I wanted to go. But um, I often tell people, because they ask me all the time, Adrian, you got a passion. Mm -hmm. Every time I see you, you're passionate. And that passion comes from the fact that I've got martyr's blood running in my veins. You sure do. And when the anointing of God is upon you, you can run like Jonah, but God is still going to take you mm -hmm. where he wants you to be. And um, finally, what I did was I said, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. I want to fulfill my God-given purpose and destiny here on earth. So here am I, have mm -hmm. thine own way. Well, <clears throat> it's good that you learned that fairly young. <laughs> yes, uh, there are a, a lot of Christians, you know, they run and run and run before they reach that point. The book is called Tell Hell No. I noticed you, uh, Pat Boone has endorsed it. Yes, ma'am. And uh, he's a Christian we can all be, all be proud, proud of for of. sure. He's a wonderful man. And the information is on the screen. Now, what does it mean and why the title? I believe that in the times in which we're living in today, we are living in some of the most hopeless uh, times. Now, even with the holidays coming, with mm -hmm. the Thanksgiving and Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, it has been said that even suicide rates go up tremendously, like 30% during mm -hmm. the holidays. Um, I wanted to write a book that captures the heart of every individual and to write them and to, to empower them to understand that they don't have to wait on somebody outside of who they are in order to bring forth transformation and change into their personal life. A lot of times we are always looking to the government, mm -hmm. we're looking at our parents, we're looking at our friends, we're looking at our boss for the promotion. God says, I have equipped you and I have put my Holy Spirit in you in order for you to, to speak into existence anything that you have and to speak that purpose and that destiny that I have for you in your life. You don't have to wait on the pastor necessarily. You can pray for yourself. When, you, when, when you're sick, you can say, you are Jehovah Rapha, Lord, you are my healer. I am healed by your stripes and that healing will take place in your body because you have that power as an individual, as a child of God. You know, that is so good. Uh, you've lived here long enough to see that we have raised up an entitlement society. Mm. People think they're entitled to everything and that somebody should do something else for them. And that is not the Christian way. Mm. That is not what's outlined in the scripture at all. Now, you kind of break this down into, um, into three parts. Uh, First of all, let's talk about how do you uh, tell hell no? Um, is, this is in every area of your life, not, not just your relationship with God, right? Well, the first th way that we're going to tell hell no is by receiving Jesus Christ 
as our personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. That's the very first mm -hmm. thing because I'm not going to live in hell and then die and go to hell. <laughs> That's just not an option for me, and it's just not an option not plan. for anybody out there. I'm not going to live in hell and die and go to hell. So the first process of telling hell no is to ask Jesus to come into your heart and receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. But after that, and something that you just mentioned just mm -hmm. a while ago about the fact that we're living in this entitlement mm -hmm. uh, times and seasons, tell hell no is about God using each individual to glorify himself through. God wants to fight the battle through us, not just for us. When mm -hmm. David got up onto the battle line, he didn't just talk. Mm -hmm. He picked up his slingshot and said, Goliath, I'm coming after you. You still have to pick up your slingshot. Moses, you still have to pick up your rod. You still got to walk around Jericho seven times before the wall come crumbling mm -hmm. down. So what this book is saying, listen, you don't have to wait on anybody. You have to be able to take the anointing that God has placed on your life and be able to engage. But we are living in a, in a day and age where, where God is supposed to be the entertainer and we are the audience. Mm -hmm when it ought to be the very opposite because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews mm -hmm. that we're encamped around with all manner of witnesses. Heaven is spectating. We are the, the ones mm -hmm. that are supposed to be the entertainers. <laughs> you think, well, is it possible that this entitlement mentality has found its way into the church? Yes. And what that does is create helpless Christians, mm. for sure, kind of welfare Christians. Uh, all right, you started out immediately in the changing of your thought life and that is so right on and I think there are religious systems uh, in fact I think anybody my age probably grew up in one that's just a little bit negative here and there and how you need to really get into the word of God one of my favorite preachers said read what it says and not what you've been taught mm, and so wow. if, if you've been taught all this negative stuff go ahead and read it in the Bible so you say change your thoughts first and then you say um, get into the word that's right that's kind of the, your second uh, bit of an admonition to uh, tell hell no let me ask you this what is your opinion and maybe your parents opinion of the American church the reason I ask that is I have a friend who goes into China quite often and he ministers to young Bible college students, they kind of meet in houses and study and that kind of thing. They say, I don't want to be like the American Christian. Wow. Is that, <laughs> is any of that feeling from your experience in the Romanian church and, and where you take up your cross and you follow him and all and, and does the American church seem just a little bit like a pablum maybe? I believe the American church today, I, I, I believe that there's a positive side to that question mm -hmm. and a negative side mm -hmm. to that question. Well, do you think the American church is telling hell no? I don't believe they are, t I believe they're telling hell no, but I don't believe that they're telling it enough. Um, because one of the problems with the church today is that we've become so narcissistic and selfish. You know, we go to church to get our blessing, our anointing, so our grandchildren could go, you know, to heaven. And it's all become a r about us and it's become about me rather than we. And so that in that state of frame, we have definitely gone away from what the biblical definition of what the church mm -hmm. should be. But I love the American church or those Christians who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal uh, the Lord and Savior because we still have the freedom to do uh, oh, what yeah. so many people mm -hmm. don't. And yes, I have martyr's blood running through my veins mm -hmm. because of my grandfather. But one of the greatest things that I can tell any individual who, have, who has accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, you have martyr's blood running in your yeah. veins as well. Mm -hmm. I believe we used to sing on a hill mm -hmm. far away, mm -hmm. stood an old rugged cross. Yeah. The emblem. And if we, if we look at the fact that Jesus died for our sins and his blood is what cleanses. We have martyr's blood running in our veins. That's why we ought to stand up. That's why we ought to speak out. That's why we ought to take hold of the privileges that we and have. That, that's exactly what you're talking about in this book. That website's been on your screen for uh, quite a little while now. The name of the book is Tell Hell No. This is the author. 
and you can go there and uh, read this in, in more detail. You say that prayer is a weapon of mass destruction. And a colleague and I were talking just yesterday about the system we grew up in where you really waited on the Lord mm. around the altars and all. I'm not sure that exists that much anymore today. And it's only that weapon of prayer that will really wow. get the job done. That's exactly right. I think while we're waiting on the <clears throat> Lord, the Lord is waiting on us to pray. Mm. The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord in the day of trouble, and I will answer thee. Mm -hmm. The Lord is up there saying, they're not calling, so I don't have to answer. When we begin to start <clears throat> calling, that's when God says, I'm going to be there available. I'll always pick up the phone. I will always hear you. And prayer is very important because private prayer will always produce public power. I, I like to start out my praying by, I thank you that you hear me. Mm. It sets the tone. You know, that's what Jesus did at the tomb of Laz Lazarus wow. before he ever crawled out. He said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. When you get your mind set, okay, he, he really is listening. Now, we have very, barely covered the surface of this book, but the last point is, is to speak up. And that is so important in so many ways. Uh, quit being such timid Christians. You don't have to be obnoxious. You don't have to get violent or anything like that. But just uh, let them know. Let them know that you are a Christian. And uh, there are so many ways that this can come up. But um, this book is so much needed, I feel, today with the American church because it will strengthen you. It mm. will embolden your faith, which to me is one of the greatest needs of the American church today that we're, we're not ashamed of the gospel of the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of yes, God yes. unto salvation. And so <clears throat> let's get rid of these mealy mouth, weak Christians <laughs> wow. and raise our children and grandchildren to be the same. And Amen. we are out of time. It's been a wonderful time to talk to this gentleman and to thank God for his ministry and to be able to bring it and introduce it to you. It's just great, but we're out of time. So mm -hmm. please join me next time Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. None. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen. 